Daf Struttura, it's me again, your host tonight, um, S.T. Werner. Um, yeah. So we had um, a full day of performances and uh, exercises and, and uh, scandals. Just produced a huge scandal outside. That's when I heard I was uh, sleeping. I didn't get it. Uh, we lost one Duff member during the struggle. So, um, yeah, this is a dangerous academy. So, um, I'll have, I'm, I'm having a little slot similar to uh, Yael's yesterday. Yael um, Salomonovic had a, a beautiful presentation of her own work that was intercut with interventions of the participants of La Struttura. Um, very vivid, very lively, very performative and um, improvised. My presentation is not that involving. Um, it's about my solo work. I'm a musician in a band called Mars and Mars. I'm also uh, collaborating with a lot of people and I have a, a series on the label Thrill Chucky from Chicago. Um, the label that also Mars and Mars releases albums with since the mid-90s. It's um, this label started out as a so-called post-rock record label. Um, the band Tortoise and Sun Cake, Trans Am, were maybe the most prolific bands from that genre. And then opened up towards electronic music, so Phil Chucky released um, the group Oval, um, an electronic music project from Germany, which I highly recommend to, uh, to check out, for those who don't know it. Markus Pop from Oval um, has been a collaborator for me for the project Microstoria, which was also released through Thrill Jockey. And since about five years, maybe four or five years, I'm doing a, a release of solo records through Thrill Jockey. And these solo records are basically uh, compiled like a mini series. So I'm running actually a, a, a label within a label. Um, I call it the Feet Blatter Catalog. So Feet Blatter is um, a weird instrument which you might want to check out for yourself. Um, it's actually a call for animals. Uh, I really like the, the, the term and the word. And the catalog, the Feet Blatter Catalog incorporates all the activities that I'm involved with that do not necessarily collect to uh, my teaching obligation, which is at the Academy of Fine Arts in Nuremberg where the Duff group is, um, finds its home. Um, Duff is traveling a lot, but um, we're actually based within the Academy of Fine Arts. So this is one of the things I'm doing, um, teaching there, or working in this Duff collective, um, being with Mars Mars, and then, yeah, having this Fee Platter catalog. So Fee Platter incorporates all these things that don't really fit to these other areas, but sometimes there's overlap. Um, I'm very casual about this series. It's mostly records, obviously, since it's a record label, but it also incorporates collages. I do like video, very bad videos I do, but um, since most of them end on the internet, it's, it's fine. I can always claim I didn't have more money. Um, so I want to start um, with a quote from Stockhausen, so you really take me seriously. This uh, is a beautiful quote, actually, can we shut off the loop? It was really good to sleep with, but now I'm getting a little frantic. Thank you. So this is a snippet from Stockhausen um, um, explaining his idea of multi-perspectivity and how um, the, 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 the opening of perspective was really a, a main um, revelation in his work. And I'm kind of... I feel like a lot of his ideas haven't really been realized because of technical problems and because he was busy with a lot of other things, um, having a lot of children, two wives, uh, too many uh, compositions to run, uh, too many operas with like 500 people. He had a few like very minute ideas of like how sound could travel. Do you want to switch out the firewall message? Yeah, super. Thank you, Paul. Um, it's pa pa Paul Wick, he's the firewall um, specialist at Duff. You see how fast that was, it's amazing. Um, so one of these ideas of, um, of Stockhausen, yeah, he'll explain it himself. See, I first record the sounds on one channel tape or two channel tape, and then I want to distribute it in the space. a lot 
with my technicians in the studio about 1953 if it would be wise to put musicians on a chair and swing them around, for example. <laughs> and then he said they might object. <laughs> Then we thought it would be perhaps necessary to let them play into microphones and connect the microphones to speakers and then swing the speakers around. Then they would perhaps not object, but they objected too. <laughs> because they said, oh no, you can't do that with me, I'm here, and the sound has to come from here. It's not only the end of fixed perspective for music, it's also the end of fixed perspective for uh, for the <laughs> for the collective, for the people that work with each other and follow a specific thought. And I think the psychological aspect of this revelation, which of course is easy to realize in technology, or actually is not easy, but um, that's the first thing you would do, has consequences. And I think it has consequences to how we respond to each other, how we work with each other, how we function as a collective, how we function as a group within an academy, within a family, within a group of friends, a society, a micro or larger society, a nation. Um, and I think this is... Uh, Stockholm is definitely following these ideas, but I think uh, what we experience here, I think, is a beautiful example of what totally connects to this. On top of it, we in Duff can swing musicians on chairs around. So I think we're, uh, we're really on, there's really a connection. We have a moving speaker um, over there, which also tomorrow it will be activated. Gustavo has been working hard on getting it work properly. And yeah, I think you'll feed it with sounds tomorrow. Yeah, perfect. So we have a, 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 a mono example of that idea. Hopefully, there will be studios with many of these speakers, which all can move, either manually or electronically, so composers can really study movement in space. They don't have to artificially amplify, um, not amplify, uh, copy space and movement in space through like the movement of sounds over speakers, but they can actually move the actual speaker. Um, so this is one of the ideas. Oh, uh, back to my series. Um, this is much more modest. It's not really a, a series that displays specific technical studies, but it's a series that incorporates, um, I don't know, being in different places because of touring or, um, I don't know, having, I don't know, residencies or just like being in different spaces within one city, um, doing recordings in different types of situations with, um, I don't know, a field recorder or uh, I'm using a laptop a lot, obviously, or working with other musicians. So um, I'd like to show you one little project that I did in Foligno, Italy. I think that's a really nice uh, transition. It's, it was part of the Dan City Festival in uh, 2009. It's pretty old. Um, it's funny, although it is. It has been recorded digitally. It looks like um, VHS videotapes and all. Um, so this was a spatial composition, very analog. And it incorporated, it was actually derived from this, the church bells in the main square of Foligno. And I try to like kind of capture the different like the tuning of the church bells. So tunings of church bells are very resonant and they're really made to like make the signal travel over long distances, obviously. So I try to find out what compositionally is in the spectra of the church bell sound and figure the composition very simple that could easily be copied by musicians or adapted by musicians with various instruments. There were also um, speakers with um, electronic fragments um, attached to bicycles so people could cycle around the city. Um, there were certain arrangements timed over the day and um, you'll see a marching band that plays an old um, Umbrian folk song 
and it was kind of slowed down. I time stretched the composition and pitched it into the, the tuning of the church bell. Um, I hope the, the idea transcends. melancholia to the whole piece. I collaborated with composer Stefan Streich for this. So the main square was like the stage, but sounds were traveling into the square and traveling out of the square. So um, sounds were beautifully mixed over distance. It was the idea of having a balafon orchestra from, um, from Africa in Foligno with the original Umbrian musicians and circumstances. The two cafes in the city were playing um, an ambientish tune that would also be connect, uh, would also be derived from, from the church bell sound. So it was this constant like shifting in and out and phasing of sounds. Um, I don't want to play the full track, I think you got the idea. So this is, um, this is one of the things I can do um, as, as, a, as a sort of person, just come up with these ideas and really see how I, how I get through. It's not too much, I don't have to negotiate too much with like a larger group, I can navigate through these I don't know, obstacle circumstances and um, and sometimes it, this creates very weirdly complex um, situations. Last year I was asked by uh, Paolo Tosnado, the documenta curator for sound, to produce a piece or come up with an idea for documenta sound program and I asked what the platforms were the documenta had. So they had a radio, uh, they had several concert spaces in Athens and in Kassel, they had an archive. It was kind of a kind of a complicated setup <laughs> um, but um, I really liked um, let's see how we run this now I really liked this, this kind of different dis disparate elements so what I suggested was like um, a micro tuned feedback patch I'm really into feedbacks it's like this idea of you you send a sound out and you get it back you can create feedbacks in the computer you can create patches where within the computer you create a feedback network and then you grab certain bands from the free feedback at certain moments and um, space, spatialize them or manipulate them. It's, it's an endless uh, possibility with modulation and, and interference to, not, to create like kind of not perfectly harmonical systems and still systems which remind you of, of pitches and yeah, instruments um, or, or even language depending on the modulation. But it's actually a very abstract type of sound that you uh, deal with. Um, I don't want to zoom too much into this, so my idea was I would create um, a feedback situation, um, a, a band of spectral um, layers, and would zoom into a specific band of frequencies, all artificially made within the computer. This was my start. And then um, 
do like a 45 minute session based on one particular frequency band and give this to Documenta Radio to be broadcasted wherever in the world they had the station. So if it was Colombia or um, Madagascar or Athens or Kassel. And um, they also had it online, I think, but they had, the, the nice thing is they had it terrestrial, they had FM frequencies, similar to what we have here. We have a transmitter sending what's happening in the Skultura or like selected, edited tracks from our production um, into the fair that's going on since we started uh, La Struttura. So there's some radios in the fair, you could bring your own FM radio or you just ignore it, similar to what probably also happened to Documenta Radio. I don't know how many people in Madagascar when we were like, oh, you know, it's the honesty man piece. It's uh, one o'clock in the morning on Documenta Radio. But I, I, it's so nice, I don't care. It's like, it's like a composition, a part of a composition and it happens so far away. And I know it's happening and I, I can't hear, I can imagine it. Anyway, so over the course of six weeks, I think, or six months, um, maybe four, five months, um, so, there were these frequency bands, all different to each other, but derived from one patch being broadcast all over the world. And then I brought them together so they would create this kind of awkward harmony in Athens in a performance um, at Romanzo, um, in a kind of an off space or like a, um, a community type space and venue in the middle of Athens, um, which incorporated recordings of Bryce Desner from the band The National, guitar improvisations he added to the composition, and Aaron Desner, his brother, also in the National, being with me in the space, um, performing the piece. I'll show you an image, just a photograph. So, to ruin your imagination, actually, I like to do that. Because I think what you imagine it to look like is much more glamorous. Uh, first, I, I show you the first incarnation of uh, Glottel Wolperdinger. This is what I call this piece. Again, a Wolpertinger is like a, is a hybrid animal that lives in the Alps. It's a crossbreed of all imaginable animals. It's a rabbit with duck feet and uh, goat um, horns, or uh, I'm sure you know them. And my idea was it's a glottal Wolpertinger, so it's like a, a beast that lives in your uh, guttural uh, throat area and creates these kind of weird, um, not weird, actually interesting and appealing sounds which you can exploit musically. So Paul McDavid made this uh, collage, a drawing for the first, let's say, electronic test that I made. Um, so eventually this will become a record. Uh, Thrill Chucky will put it out next year as part of the Feet Letter series. It will be Feet Letter number seven, probably. Uh, a two-sided vinyl disc. It's very interesting to condense like hours of material and then make it like a 40-minute uh, record. So the... Uh, Romance of performance kind of looked like this. And uh, so I don't know what happens if I unplug this. The piece and also the record, um, the, the piece for the record will start with um, a voice, a, a, a woman who was part of the experimental documenta radio program. Um, who's announcing the different frequencies of the frequency bands. So each broadcast was opened with explaining which frequencies I'm playing with. So um, I really like this announcement. It's very poetic. At the same time, it's, it's pretty precise to tell you all the spectra of the, of the feedback. Lada Wolpertinger, feedback, band one. Oh, uh, she's not explaining the feedbacks here. Wait, I have to fix that. Anyway, I play the feedback for a little while. Clara Volpertinger, feedback, band two. 339 hertz, 10.14 kilohertz, 1.38 kilohertz, 1.66 kilohertz, 4.85 kilohertz, modulated.
uh, this is actually going on for 45 minutes. <laughs> so we don't have enough time. Um, yeah, it's really not so bad. We'll slow it down at some point. The, the, the voice is coming back, so hang on. Born, move your head around, you get different resonances. is a Spectric Acid, that's the latest Fee Blutter release, came out last year. Spectric Acid was, so this is a difficult <laughs> record, somehow it's completely computer based, um, so none of it is actually drums or electric guitars or things from the radio or like field recordings, it, this is all like generative computer music. Um, it's not based on uh, a metric scheme of rhythm, but it's the idea to create something that's uh, rhythmically very challenging without um, following a pulse. It's also playing with spectra, it's playing with the spectra of specific rhythmic sounds, extending them and then adding harmonic parts to it. Um, I made a few videos, just basically Flickr videos. I really like Flickr videos. <laughs> you take two images and you just keep, just have them replace, uh, how do you say, like, yeah, actually flicker, I mean, one after the other, 24 per second or whatever, or uh, rather slower, and, um, yeah, and then you see what happens, so um, I hope the sound of the video is now coming through the PA, let's see, if not, it's through the screen, so you don't get the bass, we'll see what happens. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So uh, this is going on for a while. Let's see how it ends. I have no idea. I think it's a it's a it's a happy end. <laughs> Um, I made a few of those videos, I don't want to play too many. The record's called Spectre Guess, and it's basically, this is the idea. It's not based on making videos, it's really a record, it's a CD, I really like CDs, they sound great, the frequency range is much better than mine. You can put 17 mi minutes of music on it, and it's a beautiful object, usually disappears by itself. Vinyl is heavy, every time you move, it's just like, I don't know suitcases of, of, of heavy shit and CDs, they just disperse, they just disappear at some point. Um, I really like them. So, Spectric Acid was um, actually picking up from uh, where things were left with Black Manual, a project I, re I didn't release through the Fieblatter catalog, although it's closely connected. I released it on Brigade Commerz, it's um, a label for artist recordings. Um, artists talking about their work, um, Chapman Brothers, uh, Jonathan Miese, uh, David Lynch, I think there's a um, Marilyn Manson record. It's a weird label from Berlin and um, a friend of mine is, is, is running it and he, he wanted to release this project. I started with uh, a group of Candomblé players. Um, Candomblé is, is, a, is a Brazilian idea of religion where uh, through specific rituals uh, the participants transform it's a weird, uh, kinky idea of like even dissolving the borders between men and women. Uh, most of the high priests who um, orchestrate the ceremony um, are gay, um, playing in, in women's clothes. I, I've witnessed one of the performances where a participant was taken out of the room at some point, he fell in a trance, was, was brought back in different clothes um, when he unites with his Orisha. It's um, a special god that's particular for that person. And, and there's this uh, unification in a state of trance. The music is incredibly important to create this state. I was really interested in working with these drummers because they slow down and speed up um, the rhythms all the time. <clears throat> and there's a really interesting phasing also with um, the basses and the mid-range frequencies. They use a lot of like metalish instruments. So it creates these auto-acoustic emissions. There's really resonance in the inner ear, um, like actually in the ear canal. And um, so you add harmonies to that, it really puts you in a, in a very psychedelic state. It's, a, it's a, a heightened state of awareness. And I wanted to juxtapose it with the idea of electroacoustic music, something that's very abstract and noisy. And, um, and I wanted to talk to these musicians and see if they would want to respond to my music. And they said they'd happily do it. They couldn't use certain formulas they use in condom bass or certain uh, rhythmic patterns. They would not um, use when they communicate with me, but um, there's a lot of other things. So we played a few concerts together which were all pretty wild. This is a short excerpt from a performance in Paris which lasted um, 12 hours and uh, I was the last one on stage. I thought these guys are tough and they are but uh, for some reason uh, one started smoking joints and stepped out already after six hours. The next one all, uh, finished a couple of, uh, of brandy bottles and uh, stepped out after eight hours. Uh, two more were left in the end, I uh, actually, I have to admit, I started DJing and because I didn't know what to do anymore. This is from pretty much the middle of the performance. I also created this weird black and white object. It was really a play with like black and white. Um, again, like a flickering idea of a stable image. What is it? What is depicted? The cover is like this weird angelic um, icon. It was just a very simple vector uh, program that I used to produce these, this image. Um, I did some of the visuals, we created like this big kind of fold-out carpet which you see in the background. So it's really this idea of like the image, the after image, what you see, what you don't see, what you imagine. Um, actually a pretty basic idea of acousmatic music, you don't see the origin of the sound. And I was very interested in showing the origin of the sound and juxtaposing it with the abstraction of pure electronic music.
think I closed my hard drive. Um, there have been a few remixes of the project, which came out on um, Portals editions. Um, people like uh, Cut Hands um, from uh, the former uh, White uh, um, White House uh, member. Uh, William Bennett, he made one, and for those remixes I made the videos, let me see if I find it, here's the cut hands remix, so, um, yeah, you can see it, I'm a, I'm a total bluffer, but I, 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 yeah, it's just actually, again, it's two vector images, the same principle that I used for making the visuals for of Black Manual, and, uh, yeah, just a quick snippet of the cut hands remix of Black Manual. <laughs> two images and all the colors you see is your retina uh, going mad and your brain trying to find a solution to this desperate only two abstract images and information. Uh, I find that actually quite appealing. I, I really like the brain. Yeah, I'm really happy to have a brain. Uh, one last, like just an idea of Black Manual here. here which we use uh, uh, with mouse and mouse as well built by Moore Simon Geist um, Sonic Robots um, who just put out a great record as well only like techno only made with robots like actual physical triggers hitting objects metal or glass or whatever you imagine uh, it's, it's very interesting to check check out his work um, it's, although it's techno like rhythmically quite stable um, it, it is uh, has a, a, an immense palette of colors so uh, percussion to me is like, it is close to my heart. This is how I started actually making music as a, as a percussionist. And I was very happy to be able to work with such amazing percussionists like Black Manual. This is why I'm showing you so much of that material. This last clip was from CTM Festival in Berlin, where after the concert, several people approached us really angry why we couldn't hold the beat and make a proper ethno-techno performance. And it was one of the most desperate experiences for me to like have an audience that did not at all appreciate it. I mean, <laughs> some people I think did, but they didn't talk to me. I only heard people like, I will not understand why you destroy everything. It just could have been such a nice ethno party. <laughs> and I found it like really incredibly sad. Um, here's, um, okay, we're only five minutes into like the public program starting. So here's um, Fee Blatter number two. Um, transcendental animal numbers, a video I made just with the iPhone accompanying um, a composition that on originally was like two times 20 minutes, it was a tape, A, B on the tape, um, very few copies, can't remember how many, um, happily they sold out, I was like, oh, can you sell like uh, 300 tapes, I'm like yeah, yeah, we sold them, they're all sold, so these days you're like, 
copy of people sell your tapes, and this was the video. And um, I think it even got a prize at Oberhausen for um, a good music video. We got a, it's a good music video, so geez, I'm very happy about it. This is probably why MTV never showed it, um, but yeah, Oberhausen did. Um, and the last thing I'd like to show you is, I'd like to show you a couple more things. Who mm. did the video? The name? Who did the video? Oh, I, I did it. I only show you videos I did, except the documentation of Foligno. I, I didn't do that. But it would be stupid to lie about it because you see me in the video. And actually, Black Menu are the same. The documentation videos, other people did them, but the flickering videos I also did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was a, a project at Corner House Manchester, um, a gallery space, which is it's kind of like a sad version of the Struttura because it was a similar idea of creating a space where people would come together to listen to music and uh, I worked on, I wanted to create a meditation room where people would come together and listen to music and hang out and kind of be in this in-between zone um, of, yeah, kind of like, yeah, sure there's an inspiration from La Monte Young and the Dream House, but I wanted to create more like a, a, a cave, like a, um, this kind of, you know, you don't really get the outside, you, you have an, an, an image of what's going on outside, but you actually also don't really fully understand what is inside. So I asked uh, Marky Smith, the, the, the singer from the, or the, the, the man behind the band The Fall, with whom I had been collaborating uh, in a band called Franz Hülfett uh, about 10 years ago with Andy Thoma, my partner in Mars and Mars. So Marky Smith, Andy Thoma, and me were von Südenfeld, and um, there wasn't the second von Südenfeld album, unfortunately. Um, album was called Traumatic Reflections. But we, kept, we stayed in touch, and um, I asked Mark, hey, do you want to be the high priest of my meditation room? So we want to create a meditation room where things go awfully wrong. At the same time, there's no panic. And he was like, yes, I'm up for it. And so we recorded this track. It's a multi-channel piece. And I designed this room, but as you can see, um, the execution was kind of sloppy. It's far from being as cool as uh, what the Duff uh, crew, I can't even call them students, what the Duff Collective created with this uh, Struttura. So um, I'll just give you a, a short hint um, here. Yeah. 
This is a better life here. <laughs> Thank you.